Hi, I'm Tim. Join me in this video as I show you step-by-step -step how to use QCAD, a very affordable, easy-to-use, computer-aided design drawing program for 2D, to draw plans for my twin-engine model airplane design. Let's get to it. Beautiful, man. I've been designing model airplanes for a long time and it's important to be able to draw planes with the uh, computer with a computer-aided design program. For years I used TurboCAD. I like TurboCAD a lot but it was getting kind of expensive. It was moving towards 3D. I just needed a two-dimensional drawing program. Did some research and found QCAD which is a surprisingly affordable CAD program. I'll give the address here. You download it off the internet. The cost is going to be around $40 for the program. <clears throat> and it does just about everything you want to do for a 2D uh, computer-aided drawing program. I, I really like it a lot. And so what we're going to do in this program is I, and by the way, I have an um, introduction to QCAD. I'll put a link up here. It's in the description as well, just to get you started in QCAD. But what I'm going to do is show you a practical application of QCAD now to actually draw the plans for this uh, twin engine design. Now when I drew this twin engine design, I did it by hand just because I wanted to get it on paper fairly quick. In about 30 minutes, I had everything down for the rough dimensions of the airplane. As I would build it, I'd make small adjustments. The idea was once I completed with the airplane and, I, and it flew okay, I'd take the time to refine it and draw a set of uh, QCAD plans for that, which I've done. And again, the link uh, for the plans if you want to see them is in the um, description. So I mentioned the first thing was the hand-drawn plans, and you can see these here. It was just enough to get me started to cut out the, uh, the, the wingspan, the cord, the shape of the fuselage, and so forth. The next thing to do was to t make a copy of those hand-drawn plans and just put a bunch of dimensions on them that I measured off the model to capture the changes that I made going from the hand-drawn plans to the actual model, and then translate those changes into a QCAD drawing, which we're going to do in this um, video now. So here's a picture of the final QCAD plans. You can see them here with the notes. Also what I did, because these are printed out on home computers, I made a second version of the twin plans with dimensions on that. It's not normal to see dimensions on model airplane plans because they're typically printed out full size. I, you, you can't do that at home. There is a video. I'll put a link up here on how to enlarge plans if you want to do it. But in this case, I just decided because people are having trouble using the scaled ruler to scale up the plans. I just put the dimensions on the plan itself. <clears throat> you can measure those off and very easily uh, draw them onto your foam board to make the airplane. So without further ado, let's go ahead and open up QCAD and I will take you step by step how I drew these plans in QCAD. So let's begin our drawing of the twin RC airplane. We can start with a blank paper, but what I do is I have a reference file, a master file of RC components, uh, various motors, servos, rulers that I've drawn that I'm going to use in subsequent drawings. Now this drawing is sped up just to keep it moving along, but what I do for my drawing is I'll do two base lines, a vertical and a horizontal one. Then I use the um, parallel with distance tool to draw various other sections in. There's a distance right there, and you can see the 8 inch is the width of the wingspan, and I'm drawing it from the base at the bottom. Later on, I'll trim all this out, but I think you'll see how it works. It's a fairly handy way to build up <clears throat> your drawing from these reference points. Now, this is 22 inches out. This is the wingspan, and what we're going to do now is start to do a little bit of trimming with the breakout segment tool. This one located right here. And this is wonderful version of thing of QCAD by just clicking on these extraneous parts. You can trim them without having to select or do really anything special. So there is the wing half right there. Notice we're doing just half of the fuselage. We're going to mirror that later on to do the complete uh, drawing of the fuselage. Using the parallel distance again. 
This is the width of the fuselage. Again, the fuselage is two inches wide, so we draw that one inch for the half of the fuselage. Doing the same technique, four inches followed by two inches. These are the engine nacelles on the wing. Again, by building this up from your hand-drawn plan, <clears throat> you can pretty quickly have all the areas of that drawing that you need, then trim it away with a breakout segment tool like I'm doing here. And notice just by clicking on it, you get rid of that whole segment very accurately between the um, edges of the engine nacelle. Going back to the parallel with distance, we can do the um, rear end of the nacelle. Go back to the breakout segment tool and trim that again. Now notice we have a few lines. We just select those and get rid of them. Now we'll do the same technique with the tail. We know the tail is a certain distance. It's five inches. We can have the break in the tail. We can figure out how wide the tail is. It's eight inches per side. You pretty much draw a outline on the tail, then connect it with the straight line tool, and then trim it again with the breakout segment tool. Now we'll work a little bit more on the engine nacelle using the uh, parallel line with distance. We can draw the 3 16 inch foam board sides. And we can also put in the firewall, which is 1 16 inch plywood. And there that is located right there. We do the same for the sides of the fuselage, 3 16 inch foam board. We just draw those in so we can start to get an idea of the makeup of the um, fuselage. Same for the forward one. And these are the formers before and after the wing. And we can draw in another former. Uh, between the wing trailing edge and the tail, again with just this line, and then use the uh, parallel distance tool to draw the former in here. And trim as before. Uh, here we can draw the aileron. It's one and a quarter inch uh, wide. We just freehand draw in the inner uh, side of the aileron, and we can trim that as before. Again, this is sped up just to keep things moving along in the video. Now what we're going to do is from our master file, we are going to copy a, a motor that I'd previously drawn, enlarge it, and use it as a um, for this plan so people can see where the motor are. So we just select that with the left hand, click on the mouse, we copy it because we want to keep that in the master library. Go down to the top view of the wing, and then we're going to paste the motor here. But notice it's small. We're going to have to use uh, the enlarge command to make it twice as big. And with this command, you've got to select something before you use a command. And you can see this right here, the enlarge. So we select it, pick the enlarge command. It'll ask how much you want to do it. We'll do it twice as much. Here it is. We have to rotate it 90 degrees, again, with those same series of uh, manipulation commands. And again, we're going to have to select it, then pick the command. So we select what we want to do, go to the rotate command. It'll ask how much, 90 degrees, copy it. And then we're going to paste it where we want right there. Left click and it's in place. Right click again, it goes away. So there is the motor from our library in the nacelle. Now comes a pretty important part where we're going to draw the second fuselage halves. So this is the mirror command. So we select it, uh, go to the modify, the mirror command. We go to a top and a bottom se uh, segment with a grid. We're going to keep both halves, click on that. And that's a great way to draw the complete fuselage just by drawing one half then using the mirror command for the second half. We use just the regular line select tool to clean up some of the artifacts from that um, pairing. And there is the top view of our fuselage. Now, one thing we're going to do with the spline curve tool, we're going to draw in our nose cone. Just going to freehand that. So using the spline, any experiment with the, with the, with the um, 
Bezier curve, the spline, etc., for what works, but this is good enough for a drawing like this. And there's the uh, foam nose cone on the model. Now, what we're going to do is show the dimension tools. Most plans are full size, but for <clears throat> the internet, I will use the dimension tool. You just pick each point you want to dimension, you click, and it measures that and puts it on there. So anybody who prints out this plan can very easily see the measurements of the full size plane and just draw those onto the foam board for cutting out. The plane is all straight lines, except for the nose cone. Uh, it's very easy to sketch out on a foam board and make from these um, full size dimensions. And this is all available for download in the description. Now what we're gonna do is copy this top view, the fuselage, we're gonna rotate it 90 degrees because we're gonna use this as some guides to draw the side view of the fuselage. So that is rotated 90 degrees. We're gonna go ahead and keep that there. And there is the rotated top view. We're just gonna draw some lines like we did before. And again, a trick, if you hold down the option key, the line will be 90 degrees or perfectly straight. And we're just gonna have some reference marks from the wing leading edge, wing uh, trailing edge, uh, formers, the um, tail surfaces, etc. because we're gonna use these as guides for drawing a side view of the fuselage that'll be part of the finished plane. We'll go ahead and take the line tool next and we draw the bottom of the fuselage. We know the fuselage is three inches wide, so we use the parallel distance for three inches. And that's the top of the fuselage right there. Now we're going to trim this just a little bit with the break cut segment tool. And you'll see that we're just going to fill in the fuselage to make it what we're doing. Again, this is sped up twice as fast just to see, uh, just to keep the video moving along. So now we're going to take the line tool and just draw a uh, freehand, the uh, slope for the nose section, and then another tool. Again, it'd be one inch down for a reference. And we'll take the line tool and we'll draw from the wing trailing edge to the tail. And that's about what the fuselage is going to look like. Get rid of that line, uh, use the breakout segment, and we'll clean up these extra lines. And you can see the side uh, view of the fuselage coming along. This is a 3 16 inch uh, wide for the foam board. These would be part of the formers on the side view. And again, the top of the fuselage, 3 16 inch foam board. That'll be the stabilizer elevator and the top of the fuselage. Now we'll do the same for the rudder. We'll use a reference line uh, going uh, vertical and use the parallel with distance to draw various reference points to sketch out the side view of the fin and rudder. And again, these are all from our hand-drawn uh, drawings so we know how, what, the, what the size, the dimensions of the um, fin and rudder will be. Straight line tool, we just connect these points And then with the breakout segment, we'll start trimming this to, and you'll see how the, the rudder will, will, will come into view. Again, this breakout segment is just such a wonderful feature of uh, QCAD. With TurboCAD, you had to do all sorts of backflips to get do these trim functions. This is just a thousand times easier. And there's a view of the fin and you can get rid of some of the artifacts and the rudder is drawn in in a very similar manner. Now we will sketch out with a spline tool the wing cutout. The wing cutout will be shaped by the wing. <coughs> As you build the wing, it will come into the airfoil shape, but this is a rough cut. You want about two degrees positive incidence when you install the wing. 
Now that we've basically drawn most of the plan, what I like to do is select, copy, and then paste it so we have a finished plan, everything in one place. So here's the top view, the side view. Draw a little box around it, this, this portion of the plan. Go back to our master reference library. We'll uh, copy the six inch ruler as well as the um, name box of the, um, of, the, of the plan. We'll put that in place, one here. And then I'll do a second paste uh, down here because that rule is pretty important. Just select the words, get rid of that. And then once we window select, we can select the text, type in a different name for the plane, make the, num uh, the letters a little bit larger. This is uh, 0 0.8 inches. And then anywhere in here, we can double click on the text, select it and put in the correct numbers for the plane that we're building. And then you can add notes, other things to make the plan complete. One other feature that's very handy is the leader. You know, if you just want to highlight something. So again, this is on the dimension tools. You just click, go horizontal, and that's a nice little arrow. And then you pick the text tool, uh, type in something like um, nose cone, drag it over there. And it's just a very uh, handy way to um, update your plan and show various features. Thank you very much for tuning into the video. Um, I look forward to doing more of these types, uh, teaching how to use QCAD to draw plans with tips and tricks along the way. Thank you for tuning in and we'll see you in the next video.